really. The title? So yes, we actually already knew that we were related before we started working on this, but we've taken the idea of these two very distant cosmos. Um, and the title is Aubard, Barton and Whitehaven, 1853. Cracked, fingered, blanket-faced, balm to the morning, that time before dawn, pigeons and peas swilling in red lead, filling in and trickling between the canal lines on my hands. There is fetch to cut, mice to kill, birds to scare, peas to plant, potatoes to lift and a cacophony of greens for the kitchen. There will be hell if there is no horseradish. It doesn't matter about the fog. I take his leash from the hook by the larder, careful it doesn't chink on the hooks, and hold his eyes for a beat, take stock of him, always attentive, calm, those eyes polished into pellucid globes, but ready at the word, faster than a sly thought, the way I try to be, the way they never taught me. Aprons on the hooks in the pot shed, a sheen of ice in the stone stink, icicles globule in the drain, broken crock and tails of tardiness from the boy, raker of weeds, teller of tales, cat catcher, clacking tongue scurrying off the birds at dawn. I tease the front door shut, muffle the knocker's iron, no lion's head, but a greyhound, much slighter than his great dane and great skull, steady by my ribs, as constant as the morning's whiteness which mixes inside us both in our lungs, de-icicling. We step toward the harbour, unravelling, hunting rest. Garden door, stuck fast, hand fast, swollen flesh to jelly. There is technique, a twist of shoulder, arm fast to ribs, a swift crack into a billowing belch of bonfires below the glass house. Smoke, flames, cough between the white bones, soil turned hard, pulling up the roots. But I never do find rest, and the morning knows this. He, with his speedy dumb head, knows this. The fog, too, knows this. How my world is in suspense. A glorious hope wrought tight on the tenter frame. Nodding heads, handkerchiefs clasped taut, rigging across canvas faces turned away from the overflowing ash. Grind it, grind it down, down into the soil, the earth, the groan, full fathom five and drowning in the turn of a spit and sod. You must embrace history, they say, and the land is busy cracking with the pull of those words. Only that ocean, a canvas stretch, seems free, although riddled with vessels, their wakes cotton thread, stitching coasts, but thrust by free wills in the rigging. I myself am helped by that white space, an emptiness not loss, not death, not black, but an abundance of colour, a future gorged on the spectrum. It doesn't do to think like this, although the dawn encourages it. I need that hound. I need the way he grounds me. Overflowing in the wake, white-suited journeymen sing to the soil a shanty, a song for the land. Turn me up, turn me over, plow me, pluck me, sow me true. Grow, you bastard, grow. The fine line of men shuffling across the beds towards home. That there isn't time to shuffle, that the dog's muscles know this, although his frame lumbers. And as we reach the bay where he lopes across pebbles to the water, that he vanishes into fog in the way the carcasses of ships do, in the way this morning will, perhaps, if I don't adore it, if I don't remember to preserve all the indistinctness, his collars clank, his body whitewashed, gone to that grey absence of cliffs, if I don't recall the way I love this morning, here, rooted, but with the potential to not be, to pluck myself and grow elsewhere, to unprove that horizon.